Good day, uh, my name is Michael Molondo and I'm going to talk about psychological counselling um, for the first year uh, certificate and um, I'm going to discuss uh, on the assignment uh, which I expected for you to submit. Uh, there are four assignments and I'm going to go through all four some explaining in detail what you have to do uh, by before pre uh, submitting it. So the first one is um, we are going to look at the four. The first one is going to look at the best practices in counseling. And um, so for the sake of this presentation, I'm mm -hmm. only going to look at the advantage, disadvantage. Uh, now, when you are looking at counseling itself, um, there are certain dynamics that you have to consider. Now, throughout that is uh, there are advantages that counselling is having, and there are also disadvantages. So, in your assignment, you have to discuss the advantage and the disadvantage. And for each advantage that you are giving and disadvantage, you have to give practical examples. So, after you have discussed that, then in your assignment, you have to give best practices. What practices uh, normally work and which is very good. So, the second assignment is going to look at group uh, therapy. And what is very important for this group therapy, therapy, we are going to look at issues of social psychology. So you are going to use social psycho psychology as a theory. And in your assignment, when you're going to use social, psycho social psychology as a theory, then you can discover how does group therapy, therapy work? What influence does group therapy have to the behavior of people? Uh, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages and how effective is group therapy to change behavior um, when it comes to counseling and especially education when you want to educate educate someone or, of people uh, how can you use group therapy or social psychology as part of your education to the group and this is what you have to discuss in your assignment and this needs to come out very strong so assignment two, uh, three is uh, looking again at Sigmund Freud's psycho, uh, psycho uh, sexual development theory, and this is where you have to look at what are the needs of a human being, what are the sexual needs of every human being, and based on those sexual needs, how does those sexual needs either uh, change or influence or affect the behavior of certain people. And it's very important when you are going to look at the sexual need, you have to discuss uh, the, the behaviors. And, and specifically for this assignment, we want you to focus on young people. And of course, you can also use adults. So if you use young people or adults or both, uh, it's acceptable. But you have to bring up the concept uh, of, uh, of sexuality, the concept of psychosexuality. Uh, and Freud's uh, uh, psychosexual development theory it's a very good therapy that you can use uh, as part of your assignment and to bring out some of this concept. And as you're going to do that, uh, you will discover that, that it's not just an assignment that you're going to do, but there's a lot of lessons that you can learn. And, and through your assignment, when you want to bring up the best practices or the lessons learned, uh, it will be encouraged also to, for you to do that. Then assignment four um, is looking at the different psychological theories. Now, Sigmund Freud's theory on psychosexual development is just one theory. So there are so many psychological theories, and uh, the, in your assignment, uh, you will choose any of the psychological theory. So for this uh, purpose of this presentation, I'm going to take you through the different psychological theories, but for your assignment, you only choose one. So you choose one, and then you explain the reason why you chose that specific assign, uh, theory, and why do you think that theory will work out much better when it comes to counseling young people? Um, and then you can also discuss the advantages of, 
of this specific psychological theory and, and how uh, effective is this specific psychological theory and, and what impact it can also make on young people. So in your assignment you have to bring out this, this, this uh, uh, information very much more per, uh, much uh, as possible uh, so that in your assignment when you are going to discuss this uh, you are not just going to mention the psychological, uh, or the psychological theory but you are going to give details uh, with practical example and it's very important that as you're going to discuss this uh, worth practical example that you will bring out the the dynamics uh, of this specific uh, theory now assignment number one is we're going to look at counseling and uh, counseling is uh, between two people someone comes to a trained person for advice uh, for guidance for direction so it's very important that you have to look into this. So for the sake of this uh, presentation, I'm going to look at what counseling is all about, the advantages of counseling. And then I'm also going to look a little bit on the disadvantage of counseling. And I'm not going to go into details because the purpose of this presentation is not to give you answers, but it's just to give you guidance so that you can prepare yourself for your assignment. And uh, it is expected from you that for this assignment you have to discuss uh, the concept of counseling. How does counseling benefit the counselee or the beneficiary? I mean the advantages. And then of course you're going to look at the disadvantages or the challenges that counsellors are facing. The advantages are as follows. Um, when uh, counseling is very much more concerned about the person or the client and counseling is looking at the present the now that moment what the client is experiencing what the client is going through what the, what challenges the client is having this is what um, counseling is focused on uh, which is an advantage on it and then the second advantage is it's not just the client uh, or the counseling that's listening, but also the client is having an environment where he or she can just disclose uh, uh, herself or open up to someone in a very confidential and, and private setting. So it becomes a collaboration where the counseling le counselor listens to the client and the client very transparently, very free, openly just uh, share herself with someone that she trusts. So it becomes a collaboration between the two. It becomes a conversation, it becomes a communication, a two-way communication between the two. So that's an advantage on itself, having that collaboration between the client and then the counsellor. The third advantage of counselling is, of course, both uh, the client and the counselling is looking for change of behaviour. Because the client comes there uh, uh, not just to share his or her problems, but he or she wants to see change. And counselling is all about change. And change is not just from the client or, 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 or from the counsellor. It's actually where both the counsellor and the counsellee or the client then work together in order to come up with a remedial action or a change with regard to the situation of the client. So the behaviour is being changed, the client uh, uh, knows exactly what to do, uh, the client knows exactly what, where to go. So this is very important and, and uh, which makes counselling very much more uh, imperative, uh, especially when people want to change the behavior. So the other advantage of counseling is um, no one is imposing their own ideas. The counselor is not imposing her own values or his own values, neither the counselee or the client. So which means that everyone, both the client and the counselor, expect and respect their values. And because of this collaboration and this rapport between the client and the counsellor, uh, it, it creates a, a, a value-driven uh, 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 situation. The other 
advantage of counseling is, of course, is the relationship uh, between the client and the, the counselor. But most of all is the focus is on the client because the client is having relationship outside the, the counseling session. So the client is having relationship with a spouse, with family, with friends, uh, with colleagues. So and this is where counseling helps to improve the social and personal relationship of the counselee uh, or the, the client itself. So counselling help, uh, it improve, it facilitate that the whole process that the counsellor or the client can have uh, have a healthy relationship with different people in his or her life. The other advantage is um, the ability to cope. So counselling help the client to cope. And, and not just so, even if there is no solution, at least counseling will help the client to make the right choice, the right decision, and to cope with that circumstance until the client will overcome it. So it's very important that counseling help and it assists the client as much as possible uh, to have the ability to cope. And then of course, um, at the end of the day, it's not the counselor that's making the decision, but the client must make the decision. The role of the counselor is just to facilitate. It's just to present option, but at the end of the day, it's the client that must make the final decision. And this is where counseling helps, because counseling facilitates the process, as I've said. It opens up for options, it explores different options, and at the end, the counselor assists uh, the client then to make that the right decision, or the decision that's rightful for the specific situation. So it's very important to look into that. There are also disadvantages of counselling, um, for an example, where a counsellor can become very biased, uh, can become silent, uh, as we call it, silent, silent discrimination or silent stigma. Uh, so it happened, I mean, the client, or the, I mean, the counsellor, him or herself, is also a human being, it's a person. So it happens sometimes that when a counsellor, when a client comes into an office of a client, uh, you know, the, the, the t temptation of biasedness or being biased, it's, 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 it's quite real. Then, of course, there are also another other list of unethical practices uh, which can also negatively influence counselling. And for the sake of this presentation, uh, I, I will then uh, encourage you as a student, when you do your assignment, that you have to explore and look at other unethical practices which might arise um, and it can become disadvantage uh, to the client and also to the counsellor uh, in the same way. So it's very important that when you are going to submit your assignment that you have to look at this aspect of counselling as a definition. You look at the advantages, you look at the disadvantages, and then of course you're going to explore other best practices and what you think are the best practices, how it can work and how it can improve uh, counseling itself uh, as a discipline. The second assignment uh, is looking uh, at uh, social uh, psychology. Now remember, for this assignment, you are going to use group therapy as a as a methodology to to bring or to bring he, uh, ch behavior change uh, in a group. So we we uh, assume you you have a group of people around you, and you are going to use group therapy, uh, uh, and you're going to look at the different group dynamics. Now. Social psychology is one of the theory that you can use, and and for the sake of this presentation, I'm just going to look at social psychology, what it's all about. Now, social psychology is 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 concerned with how we uh, we explain ourselves and and how we explain the behaviors of others, and and how others are affected or affected through our behavior. So at the end, it becomes a social dynamic, uh, it becomes a human interaction, human relation, human behavior. And, and when you are acting in certain way, is how does that act? Or if you behave in certain way, how does that behavior affect someone next to you? And this is where you bring a group of people together. And, and social psychology is very uh, popular, especially when it comes to uh, alcoholics or alcoholics anonymous, where you use 
people or those people that are using drugs and they come together, uh, even mothers that lost their children. So there are so many groups with the same uh, concern coming together and sharing their experiences and then also by that sharing of experiences also disclosing um, their, their strength and also their weaknesses. And through sh that sharing and listening, uh, it, it, it becomes therapy by itself. And that's why they call it group therapy, because you've got different members or different individual that's in a group and they share certain things or certain experiences, whether good or bad. Others are listening and they are learning out of the experience of someone else. And that becomes therapy, that becomes a, a journey of wholeness. So that's why group therapy is very important. And in social psychology, you find it um, as a part of, of a very important component. So for, uh, so for you as a student, you are expected to look into uh, the group dynamics. You are expected to look at group therapy and how that influence behavior. And you can take any subject, you can take anything, uh, as long as you give practical example as, as much as possible. Uh, assignment number three, uh, we're going to look at Sigmund Freud's theory. Uh, now, Sigmund Freud uh, um, uh, asked, uh, and he was one of many psychologists during the turn of the age, and, 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 and we call him also the father of psychology. So he asked a lot of questions, and, and, and for those questions, he was looking for answers. So he was looking for answers. And by searching for answers, he came up with, uh, he actually discovered certain things about people, human beings, individual. And, and that actually gave him a clue to better understand what human beings are all about why people behave in certain way and it also made him to understand the uniqueness of every individual and and he used look at the personality of a human being and he discovered there are so many diversity in human personality but in those diversity there is such uniqueness and he then went further where he started to explore and and, and, and talk to people. And he started his, uh, to, to prove his theory um, through uh, talking to people, counseling, and then uh, his focus was from baby stage up to childhood, or what they call infancy stage, when you are an infant up to childhood. And he believed um, that whatever we do uh, is a reflection of what happened to us during our development stage. Uh, what who you are or what you are or what you do is actually a reflection of your development stage. Where are you coming from? So that all determines you as a person. And this is where he came up with the development stage of psychos, uh, psych the psychosexual development stage. And there are different stages where he starts with the oral stage, going to the anal stage, the phallic stage, the latency stage, the genital stage. So for the sake of uh, this assignment, um, I will encourage you to, to look at those different stages, but I will just quickly go through those stages. Uh, the first one, the oral stage, is looking from the birth up to 18 months, where the, the person discovers his sexuality through the oral means the mouth. Then the second stage, which we call the anal, is after the, a month of 18 months, up to three years, where someone explores sexuality through anus when he goes to defecation to the pot, toilet. The third one is then what we call the phallic stage, uh, where you reach the age of three years up to seven age. This is the age of pre-primary, where you start to discover your genitals. And then you go to the latency stage, where you are beyond the age of seven years up to puberty, where you discover that uh, you are more than just a human being. You, you have sex, uh, sex, sexual feelings, you, and that's where you start to explore and meet other, uh, uh, other people or other uh, uh, young people. And then the genital stage is the last stage from puberty out to adulthood. So it's very important for you that when you are going to look into this different stage of sigma or the psychosocial stage of three, you are going to look at how does this stage, uh, according to Sigmund Freud, uh, 
affect or influence your behavior. So in your assignment you have to look at human behavior. You're looking at uh, the sexual needs of a human being and what makes that person to behave a certain way based on his sexual needs. And then you're going to use Sigmund's Freud theory on psychosexual, psychosexual uh, behavior, psychosexual development of your behavior. So then, uh, you are also then in that same assignment when you are going to look at it, you are going to look at the different risky sexual behaviors. Uh, what behaviors are risky? Uh, what behaviors are not risky? And this is also where you can look at different dynamics or different aspects of human behavior and human relation where you look at the different sexes and, and their role uh, when it comes to on their own sexuality. So in your assignment you are expected to bring out those different stages and then uh, as I said earlier you can choose whether you want to use young people or whether you want to use adult, or whether you want to use a combination of both. But it's very important that in your assignment that you have to bring out those truths. And uh, for each stage that you're going to uh, explain, uh, you're going to uh, present, you have to explain with practical examples. Uh, for each stage that you are going to present, you have to explain with practical examples. And it's very important that you must know um, that all of us are having different needs. Now, I will also make reference to Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchical needs, um, where he used the pyramid. So you can also make reference to Maslow um, and, and looking at his basic needs of human being and his pyramid of uh, which he called the hierarchical of, of needs. So you can also use that as a basis in your assignment. Uh, you can look at different other theories also. So if you use somebody else's theory that can prove that that theory can explain why humans behave in certain way, uh, then you are more than welcome in your assignment to use those theory and then also to explain why do we need those theory as much as possible. Then the fourth assignment is then the different uh, psychological theories and uh, uh, now uh, for this is uh, you as a student must know what are the different theories uh, that are there. So I'm not going to go into details, I'm just going to mention the different theories, uh, but you as a person, you choose what theory is the best for you. You give reasons why do you choose the specific theory. And if you have explained why you have a choice, uh, uh, make a choice why this theory is the best, then number three, you have to explain how are you going to apply this specific theory in your own life, in the life of your family and in your life of your career. So you, it's the three areas. You identify the theory, then what the theory is all about. You give the definition, you give what the theory means. Then secondly is you give reason of your choice. Why did you choose this theory? And this is where you can also give the advantages of having the specific theory. And then number three is you are going to discuss how are you going to apply the specific theory that you have chose or chosen. Um, uh, why you are going to apply it, how are you going to apply it, why are you going to apply it in your own personal life, how you're going to apply it, and then in the life of your family, and then also in the life of your career. Now, there is a number of theories that we can go through, so this is just an, uh, a few of the theories, um, the, the basic uh, theories that we have, is the behavioral theory, uh, where you can also look um, at or the conditioning theory, uh, you can look at Ivan Pavlov, you can look at the conditioning theory uh, as part of the behavioral theory, why people behave certain ways. And then the development theory, which is looking at the different development stages of people. Um, uh, you can look at different psychologists. There are very good theories on that. The cognitive theory, which looks at the mind, the mental, uh, and how someone can develop, uh, to develop its cognitive skills, looking at different intellectually, intellectuals, and very important. Personality theory, like this one of, of Sigmund Freud, which we have just discussed. There are different 
kinds of theories that you can also look at. And then, of course, the humanist theory, which is also very important. Um, you can also link that to the behavior, but the humanist theory, looking at human rights, looking at the right of women, looking at gender dimension, very important. So in your assignment, when you are going to make a choice of this theory, then you can also uh, choose uh, any, because in each theory there are different theorists, uh, what we call um, psychologists. So you can mention only one or two for each theory or for the theory that you have chosen, and then you must also give a reason uh, for your theory. So that's with regard to the uh, uh, four assignment that's expected from you, uh, for you to do as much as possible. So I hope uh, that this presentation has helped you, and, and, and I wish you then all the best uh, for your assignment. Thank you.